Good morning, everyone. This is Curtis Hawks with Insurance Agency Marketing Services, and uh, want to take a moment here and thank everybody for taking the time to be on the call today. Hopefully, uh, everybody had a good holiday and is ready to get back here as we enter this last leg of the, the fourth quarter. So, uh, November uh, is LTC Awareness Month, and so uh, it's a it's a great opportunity to talk about different ways that we can help people, uh, not only from a wealth transfer standpoint, but also mitigating that risk in retirement, um, the the cost of care, and uh, the ability for an LTC event to decimate a retirement nest egg is a very real uh, uh, issue out there. Um, one in two people are, are going to experience some type of an event. And so single premium life insurance can be a very effective way to not only address that issue while somebody's alive, but also very efficiently with good leverage um, transfer wealth to the next generation. So uh, we've got Gary Voith with Baltimore Life, uh, who's going to be on the call with us today, uh, chatting uh, a little bit about that and the product portfolio, as well as some marketing and sales ideas. Before we get into that, though, I did want to take a moment and uh, chat for a couple of minutes about some of the ways, in addition to bringing really good speakers and product and sales concepts to the table, some other ways that IMS can help partner uh, with advisors out there. Uh, first of which is our new producer builders. And this is really a great program. If you're new to IMS or if you're looking at working with IMS, this is a great way for us to, to meet you where you're at and help you to get to where you want to be. And so you can see here that we've got different production levels there and different things that you can get at different production levels. And it's all about your business and where you're at and giving you options uh, to help you grow your practice. And what I would also mention to you as well is one of the, the, the pillars, the, the cornerstones of IMS is that we try and take a customized approach to every rep that we work with. And so if you're doing some things that are working well for you right now, and you'd like to just see us uh, help partner with you on those, reach out to your sales director over here. Phone number is 800-255-5055 and talk to them about that. Um, we're more than happy to customize uh, what we're doing uh, to your business. Uh, additional business builders, uh, first off, our referred producer program. And, and, and this is honestly some of the biggest checks we cut are off of this. But if you uh, are working with IMS, you're happy with the service that we're doing, and you know somebody that maybe is looking to make a change here uh, as we go into the end of the year, uh, send them our way. Not only will you get a $50 bonus when they get contracted, you'll get an additional $100 bonus when they write their first piece of business. And on an ongoing basis, uh, you can accrue additional dollars uh, that will be cut out to you based off of their production. You don't have to do anything. We'll take care of the service work and take care of the agent. Um, but it's a great way to generate additional revenue for yourself. Uh, next is our marketing reimbursement platform. As you can see there, we've got our numbers uh, up at $100 for every 100000 of index annuity premium, $200 for every 100000 of single premium life, and then $200 for every 10,000 of target premium. This is this is a great way to uh, double the size of your marketing budget and get in front of more prospects. And as we know, this year has been uh, a challenging year uh, when it comes to marketing. And so part of what goes into solving that is being more creative in how you market, but then also and in a lot of areas, it's having to spend a little bit more money on advertising than you normally would. So this is a great way for IMS to help you do that. Uh, back office support, everybody says they've got really good service. I, I think we've got some of the best service in the industry, but what I would tell you is I really feel like service has had a spotlight put on it this year. As we've had carriers who have gone to working remote, they don't have as many people in the in the office, I think it's become more and more important to have a good team of people that work with you at your IMO. And so whether it's new business processing, case design, getting you the forms that you need, getting you up and running on e-applications. Um, give us a call, talk to your sales director over here. Uh, you'll find that we can we can do a very, very good job for you and we've got a wealth of resources. Speaking of e-applications, uh, I do want to mention that we do have Firelight integrated on the website. And so if you 
haven't used that before, uh, give the team a call. They can help you and walk you through that. But you can see here, we've got a number of carriers on this platform. We're constantly adding carriers. I would also mention to you as well that we have iPipeline on, that, on uh, the IMS website as well. And so if you're wanting to do e-applications within that platform, uh, we've got that available, which is probably going to be on the life insurance side. Uh, we've also got our marketing solutions, and I, I think creative, again, is really the key word, as, as many of you have experienced this year. Um, you've got to get a little bit more tactical when it comes to marketing. A lot of advisors have been able to market year after year doing the, the same mix of activities and getting a, a similar result, and as we've seen with COVID, that's really changed the dynamic of things. And so. Um, not only are we working with uh, agents on uh, core brick and mortar types of marketing, but we're also finding that doing micro campaigns on a variety of topics has been very successful as well. And so I would, I would encourage you uh, to take advantage of our custom marketing analysis process. If you haven't put together your marketing plan for 2021, give the, the team a call. They'll go through and do a needs analysis with you on your current marketing assets, target market, population density, all of those types of things, and then produce a customized marketing plan for 2021. And so it, it really enables you to go into next year with a sound plan based off of the current market conditions that can help produce consistent results for you. Um, the IMS website, uh, as, as we talked about, again, is a great resource. If you haven't gotten registered on there, I'd encourage you to go to the IMS Inc. website on the bottom left of the page. Um, you can get registered on there. Uh, you can also, if you aren't, if you haven't signed up for our emails, uh, you can subscribe to those as well. But we've got quoting engines for annuities, life insurance. You can pull forms. You can do e-applications. We've got current product information. We also have our sales resource library, which literally has hundreds of different point of sale pieces that you can use either face to face or or digitally uh, with prospects to explain a variety of different types of concepts. And as many of you have seen this year, the ability to articulate ideas and concepts in a simple and straightforward format is critically important when you're doing virtual presentations. Uh, to that end, we, uh, have a retirement analyzer that we've uh, had on our platform for a number of years. But what I would tell you is for those individuals that are trying to answer that question of how do I know if I'm going to have enough money in retirement? Not only does the software do, do a very effective job of articulating that, but again, it's, it's very, uh, very simple and straightforward for them to understand with uh, the green, yellow, red uh, charts on there. And so if you're not currently using this, I would encourage you to give us a call, talk to us about it. Uh, if you're a producing agent with IMS, we'll pay for the software for you. But it's a great way to discuss income planning uh, with prospects out there, as well as existing clients. Uh, in addition to this, uh, I want to bring up IMS Wealth Management. Uh, there's never been a better time. If you're, if you're currently thinking about becoming an IAR, give Charles and his team a call. Uh, they do a great job. They'll, they'll be more than happy to chat with you a little bit about what they do, how they operate, et cetera. If you're not quite happy with your uh, current relationship, then again, I would encourage you to reach out and chat with Charles and his team. Uh, they do a, a very good job. They've got a very customizable platform and have been growing at a very rapid rate uh, with the service that they provide. So with that, I will, uh, get this uh, switched over to Gary. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, November is Long-Term Care Awareness Month, and so it's a great opportunity to uh, talk about the living benefits of life insurance. And, and again, single premium life insurance is, is a very effective tool. They can show your clients how to generate better leverage, yield, and get their assets into a more tax advantaged position. And so uh, the other aspect about it is it's simple and easy, and I think that's something that uh, a lot of clients are looking for um, when you look at getting APSs, doing exams, doing all those types of things. Being able to uh, get someone coverage in a simple and straightforward format is very appealing to the population out there. So with that, Gary, I'll, I'll hand it over to you, and we appreciate you being on the call today.
Well, thanks very much and good morning, everyone. I want to really appreciate the opportunity to spend some time with you today. And certainly, thanks, special thanks to our partner, IMES, who has been an incredible partner for us, one of our leading partners for many years now. Great service and, and to their agents and, and just a great partner for us. So thanks for the opportunity uh, today. We're going to be talking about uh, our tax efficient asset transfer program today. And uh, specifically, if I can get it to come up there, there it is. Uh, our two products that are in that portfolio are Generation Legacy and Single Premium Whole Life product. Both of these products are really designed uh, with your senior clients in mind who have what we like to call some leave behind money. Money they don't want to leave on, they simply want to leave behind to generate in a state for their families and do it in a tax efficient way. No matter whether they have funds coming from annuities or qualified plans or money uh, that is after tax cash funds, CDs, money markets, those type funds, uh, we have products that can address their needs. You know, if we look at the landscape of this market, it's absolutely huge. Uh, research shows that trillions of dollars in wealth are gonna be transferred to the next generation over the next 50 years. 75% of parents believe it's important to leave an inheritance and only 20% agree strongly that their children are ready or will be prepared to receive it. 54% believe their families would benefit from a formal asset transfer plan, but only 10% of them have such a plan. So it really is the opportunity for you and the financial advisors out there to bring this to their knowledge. Most people are not aware uh, that this type of a product exists or this type of program exists to help them in uh, successfully and tax efficiently transferring their estate. The first product we'll get into today is that solution is Generation Legacy. And as I alluded to, this product is really designed to have you help your client facilitate the transfer of single premium funds from non-qualified annuities and other qualified funds not needed for daily living. Um, these funds could be um, annuities, um, 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, and the like. It's obviously there to leave an estate for the client's heirs and favorite charities. It does obviously increase their estate value. Issue ages are 60 through 80, and with a single premium uh, and a single application, you're going to be having Baltimore Life issue two products that are seamlessly administered together. A single premium immediate annuity that will receive the transfer of the funds, along with a limited premium payment whole life product. Once issued with that single application, both products will be administered seamlessly together to provide all the benefits we'll talk about here today. We have simplified underwriting through four tables. We'll talk about that, as well as automatically included in all states where it's approved, and that's the very high majority of states, is our accelerated death benefit rider, which truly can provide clients uh, you know, living benefits at a time when it's needed most. So we have another twist that we added a few years ago to Generation Legacy in the base product. Normally, you're working with a single insured and annuitant, right? One person bringing in the funds, one person that's qualifying for the insurance, and that deal is, is struck. But oftentimes you're walking into a household where you might have married couples and one spouse has funds uh, out there, and let's say, you know, 403Bs or 401Ks or annuities that they're trying to move along to the next generation, but they're not healthy enough to insure. And of course, the other spouse who's healthy and can be insured. Well, we've created the spouse option for Generation Legacy, where you could write one uh, as the insured and the other as the person who will fund uh, that, that product. Keep in mind that the SPIFs payouts, if the person funding it, the unhealthy uh, individual who funds it, is, uh, is dies during the period while the life insurance is being paid by the annuity, that funding from the SPIA will continue uh, to pay up the life product. Uh, the annuity, uh, the annuant actually will waive the right to have their own personal beneficiary receive the funds because those FIA funds will be used to pay up the life insurance product. The good news is for that uh, unhealthy annuant, there is no maximum age limit uh, for them to fund the life insurance for their healthy uh, spouse. So that really works out quite well. So if you're in those situations, know that we have a solution for you. Now, at the end of um, 2018, approximately, there was uh, $7.3 billion of enforced deferred annuities out there, and about 65% of them were in tax-qualified 
uh, plans uh, and employer plans. And, you know, obviously, you know, uh, you're running into a lot of that with 401ks and 403bs. Uh, some people uh, need all their money as income, and other people are looking to take portions of those funds and pass it along to the next generation if they can. Uh, of course, that also includes uh, nearly 35% of the $7.3 billion is money out there in non-qualified annuities. And that is really a significant amount of the money that you're selling out there into annuity products, where people buy those annuities to get a good rate of return, uh, defer the, the growth in terms of tax, uh, at another time, and they might keep rolling those annuities over time uh, into another period, three-year period, five-year period, whatever. Uh, the good news is most of those people will never need that money for income. They're simply using this as a vehicle, as a way to defer tax, as a way to get a good rate of return. And the question is, what are they doing that for? Are they really trying to transfer that money to the next generation? Well, we know that probably the case, and these are great prospects for the generation legacy product. Taxation, of course, uh, is, is there is an RMD that kicks in now at age 72 plus. That, uh, that, that number has changed, obviously, the age on the most recent changes in the tax law. So at some point in time, there is an RMD that will kick in uh, on those annuities. Keep in mind also that taxation occurs when the annuity owner dies. So if you have someone who has an annuity, passes it along to the next generation, Who's going to pay the tax? It's the person on the other end who probably is in a higher tax bracket than the person who had the original annuity. So we know annuities are fantastic products, but the question is, are they really the best product to die with if your only plan was to pass that to the next generation? Well, we feel generation legacy is a great solution. And conceptually, I want you to think of this product as a gift, a gift your client's trying to pass on to the next generation. And inside the gift box, you're going to help facilitate the transfer of annuities and qualified funds. As I mentioned, by writing a single application, uh, Bolts for Life will issue a SPIA that will receive the transfer of those funds along with a limited premium payment whole life product. Now, over a period of either seven or 10 years, that SPIA will automatically pay premiums to the life product. So there's nothing the agent has to do. There's nothing the client has to do. Unlike years ago when you and I both were out there writing, you know, a separate SPIA and a separate life product and manually we were moving premiums around each year, maybe from company to company or within the same company. This is one vehicle that automatically does it for you. Once it's set up, it, it just goes on its own. So that really is a, a great reason to have it set up this way. What dictates the payment pattern? It's the issue age. So if the client's 60 to 74, we'll issue a 10 year payout on that SPIA along with the 10-year limited premium payment whole life product. If they're 75 to 80, seven-year payout with a seven-year paid up life product. But here's where the benefit really it does in fact get rich. And that is, what if the client were to die during the period of time while the annuity is funding the life insurance? Well, we know that if the client dies at any point in time, uh, we would pay an income tax-free death benefit that's greater than the single premium paid. But if the client were to die during that seven to 10 year period while the SPIA is paying for the life insurance, the remaining payments from the SPIA would also be paid to the named beneficiary. So that's a great benefit that the betting is gonna get both. We'll talk a little bit more about those payouts of the SPIA at death uh, later on. So at the end of the seven or 10 year period, the SPIA goes away, it's done its job, the life insurance is now fully paid up, and it continues to provide income tax-free death benefits greater than the single premium paid. It also continues uh, to provide cash value growth within the product, and it also continues to provide the accelerated death benefit rider that we'll talk about. So as a recap, issue ages are 60 to 80. We base our pricing on current age or age at last birthday. And the reason this is important is because you're gonna be dealing with the transfer of funds from other products and institutions and uh, we will issue the policy based on the day the client, um, uh, the day we receive the funds from that uh, institution for the transfer. There's no backdating uh, to conserve age. It's based on when we receive the funds. The minimum premium to get this started is only $5,000. How many clients do you have out there that have maybe multiple annuities with you or other companies that in fact, um, you know, are, their only plan is to move that money to the next generation? It's a matter of when you do that fact find 
and you discover those annuity funds as an example of asking the right questions to determine what the goal is. When the client you know, has a 401k or an IRA, again, asking the right questions, not just finding the money, but finding what the goal of the money actually is. The maximum face amount that we'll issue for the life product based on the single premium paid is $450,000. We have uh, one underwriting class for this product and it's what we call our standard class, which through simplified underwriting, we will issue any risk standard through table four. Premium classes, we have two, non-tobacco and tobacco. Cash values to accumulate, of course, in the life insurance product on a non-participating basis. Partial surrenders, they are available in the life policy, but after the life policy uh, becomes uh, fully paid up, right? So the seven or 10 years you have to wait before you can take a partial withdrawal from the life product. Now, loans are available at any time from the life product based on a maximum interest rate of 8%. So now let's talk about that accelerated death benefit rider, because as I said, it's automatically included in all states where it's approved, and that's the high majority of states but it truly does offer a living benefit to your client. So there are three health event triggers that will allow you to accelerate the life insurance benefit, the face amount of the life policy, uh, in those events of terminal illness, confinement to a qualified nursing home facility, and in situations of extended care, home health care, and adult daycare. Uh, obviously, this increases the liquidity of the life policy's death benefit upon the acceleration, a lean, for the amount of money that was taken will accrue at an interest rate of 8% prior to death. And I'll show you how that calculation works in just a moment. The maximum that you can accelerate is 250,000. The minimum is 5,000. But the good news is this benefit is paid out once and it's paid out in a lump sum. And these are unrestricted funds. So the client can use these funds for whatever reason they deem necessary. That's really a great benefit uh, with this rider as opposed to a true long-term care policy. Keep in mind, you know, the long-term care policy or contract is the best way to provide for long-term care needs. This is not a long-term care policy, but for those seniors who can't really afford long-term care insurance, it's a great way to provide cash at a time when it's needed. And again, unrestricted funds. So what about the definitions of these riders? How, what are the percentages of payout? The first is terminal illness. Simply put, the client needs to be uh, have a life expectancy of 12 months or less, and we would pay out up to 75% of the death benefit in that situation. For qualified nursing and extended care, both of these can be accelerated up to a maximum rate of 50%. And the definition of the nursing home confinement is, client needs to be chronically ill, confined to a nursing home facility for 90 days with the expectation of a permanent confinement. For extended care, same chronic illness exists, uh, had been so for at least 90 days, but now they're requiring care provided by either a licensed home health care agency or a licensed or state certified adult daycare center. Now, keep in mind that there are about five or six states out there that have different percentages than the 75, 50% I'm showing you here. Pennsylvania and Indiana are an example of that. Uh, they uh, max out at 65 and 40%. All those state specific rules are shown on our state approval charts, which can be found out on the agent website. So we talked about chronic illness. What does that mean? Pretty standard definition uh, as it applies to the nursing home provision um, and the, um, the extended care provision. If the client satisfies either of these definitions for chronic illness, we consider them chronically ill. The first one is they can't perform two out of six activities of daily living, which you see there on the screen. If they're okay on their ADLs, they may be suffering, let's say, from a severe organic mental illness, such as Alzheimer's or dementia. In either case, we consider them to be uh, chronically ill. So let's show you some quick examples of potential payouts here. Here's the client um, who, in fact, has 100,000 in face from the life policy. We're gonna say they're terminal, so, the maximum they can accelerate is 75%. They, in fact, do that. They say, okay, I'm terminal, 12 months or less to live. I'm gonna take that payout of 75,000. We have a one-time fee for that transaction of $100. Uh, so if the client were to die immediately after getting that money, no time for interest to accrue, 
their death benefit would be calculated by taking the face less the $75,100, giving you a remaining death benefit of $24,900. But let's say the more likely cir circumstance would be this one, and that is that they still take the cash up front as a living benefit of 75 grand, but now they die one year after taking the cash. So there now is a year of interest that accrues on the lien prior to death. So now the death benefit is the face minus the original lien, less 8% of interest of $6,008, or $6,008, giving you a remaining life insurance benefit of $18,892. So the intent of this rider is truly to have, um, you know, cash benefit on hand uh, as a living benefit, but still always to have, whenever possible, a remaining life insurance benefit for the beneficiary that provides both benefits that they're looking for. So could this rider, and technically it's two riders, one for terminal illness and the second one uh, for um, nursing home and extended care, could these riders technically terminate? Well, if you decide that you want to terminate the life policy, in that SPIA life package, they could terminate because they're attached to the life policy. And you're thinking to yourself, how would the life policy end if the SPIA is automatically paying for it? Well, normally that's true, but technically these are two separate contracts. So if the insured came back to us and said, hey, you know, I thought I didn't need that single premium that I gave you, but now I need as much money back as possible, they could separate the policies and we would pay out the remaining payments from the SPIA on an annual basis to them, and we would pay out any cash value that's there in the life policy. But at that point, the riders end. If the insured dies, we pay a death benefit, not an accelerated benefit. And finally, uh, what if the uh, the death benefit, it, you know, the the lien exceeds the remaining life insurance benefit? Well, let's say the person's terminal, right? And normally they're going to live for a year or less but they, let's say, live four plus years. Um, technically, the interest on that lien could outrun the remaining life insurance benefit. Very, very unlikely that's gonna happen, but in that situation, the owner may repay all or part of the lien to keep this qualified as a life product. Policy does include a cash value that does continue to accumulate on a tax deferred basis, and uh, keep in mind, if a loan is requested when there is an existing lien on the policy, you can't do a loan and a lien. You can have one or the other. That's important to know. And a key thing is we'll always tell you, and any company should tell you with this rider, is that benefits under these riders technically may, may is the key word in certain circumstances, be taxable, so make sure they consult with the tax advisor. So here's a quick um, recap of a situation. Female 70, non-tobacco, puts 50 grand in as a single premium. Uh, and of course, that's going into the SPIA portion of the contract. The life insurance benefit is $78,055. So they've immediately increased their estate value upon issue by over $28,000, knowing that if they die in the first 10 years, uh, the remaining payments from the life, uh, the remaining payments from the SPIA would be paid uh, out to the beneficiary as a death benefit. But look at these terminal illness benefits that could be paid. You know, this is real cash to a senior at end of life who doesn't have a long-term care policy, who may have bills to be paid, or may just decide they want to take a trip with their family around the world. Uh, the funds are there for them to do that uh, in this type of a rider. So it's an excellent source of funds at end of life. So what's another benefit of the um, tax efficiency, I'll say, of Generation Legacy? And it really is dealing with the transfer of the funds. So what if you have money that's coming from an IRA? Money from an IRA, of course, has never been taxed before. Eventually, Uncle Sam is going to get taxed on that gain. Uh, what about money coming from an annuity? There's a basis and a gain. So the idea is, is that if we can allow you to transfer funds, let's say from annuity, and you know spread the tax out on that gain over the same 10 or 7-year period, that money is being used to pay for the life insurance, that's a, that's a great deal, right? And that's exactly what we do. So by putting the money into this product and spreading the money out in premium payments over seven to 10 years, the owner is going to receive a 1099 each year for the gain on that money they rolled for that particular year. So 10 or seven years, they'll get a 1099 each of those years 
it's very, very important the client understands that. You never want to have them surprised. Of course, the great thing is the SPIA payments that we make to the life product does satisfy the RMD rules that kick in again at 72. If death occurs during the SPIA period, uh, as I told you, we will pay the remaining payment of those SPIA uh, annual payments out to the named beneficiary. And um, you know, if it's paid out annually, which is the default method, the beneficiary will get a 1099 on the gain portion of the money that's being paid from the SPIA. If they elect, they might want to decide to take a commuted lump sum of those SPIA payments, which they can do. And in that case, they would still get a 1099 for the distribution. But you know, it's great to be able to get both the life insurance, income tax-free, and the remaining payments from the SPIA. One note on the application. Uh, because we're dealing with funds uh, as a rollover, and because we're going to need all those funds in order to make this contract work, it's very important that you check on the application where appropriate that you do not want tax withheld from the annuity uh, that you're rolling over. We cannot do withdrawal of tax up front. It throws the math out on how the face amounts are calculated and the values calculated. So please make sure you check. You do not want tax withheld from the annuity that you're rolling over. Otherwise, we've got to send everything back to you. So here's some examples of premiums to death benefits. And I want you again to start thinking, prospecting in your mind uh, of those clients that you have out there that have annuity contracts, that have multiple annuity contracts, that probably have 401ks, IRAs, 403bs, that they're looking for other ways to use the funds other than income. At 65, Don Tobacco, if that person puts $50,000 into the Gen Lake product, um, we're going to, of course, pay out the SPIA over 10 years to pay up the life policy. And for the male, that life policy will generate a face amount of almost $77,000. And for the female, the face amount is $86,605. So at issue for the female, you've increased her estate by almost $37,000, knowing that if she dies in the first 10 years, uh, the remaining payments from the SPIA would also be paid. Not a bad situation, right? And this slide really proves that out. So what about 75, a little older, a little shorter life expectancy? Numbers still look good. So for the 75-year-old, because they're 75, we'll issue a seven-year payout on the SPIA and a seven-year paid-up life product. For the male, the face amount on the life product becomes 61209 And for the female, the face becomes uh, almost $67,000. So for this female, you've increased her estate by uh, almost 17,000 and for the man, uh, just over $11,000, knowing that the SPIA payments would also be, be uh, paid out if they were to die in the first seven years. Let's take a look at this slide. This is a, a screenshot actually of the uh, uh, software. Uh, we do proposals for this product. This is uh, there's no signed illustration required for this product, but we do have software that allows you to generate a proposal with the description of the project and a letter and a ledger. We also uh, have uh, our, our application that will allow you to do it right on your phone. Okay, uh, so if you look at it here, you'll see this is the 70 year old who's a non tobacco user putting 50 grand in and with a cost basis, let's say from an annuity of 40,000. So you can see in the third column, they put their 50 grand in, it goes into the SPIA, and that SPIA will make annual payments to the life product of $5,250 a year. Oh, just over 4,000 of it is excluded from tax based on the basis, and based on the interest factor, the estimated taxable income over that 10-year period, where the 1099 will be generated, is uh, about $1,249.50. So this is the column, is very important for that insured to understand uh, that they will get a 1099 for that amount. Uh, the death benefit is shown on the ledger, 78,055. And of course, if they were to die early, this is the commuted lump sum of the SPIA payout. Applications, uh, if you go to our agent website uh, in the product toolkit for Generation Legacy, you can generate the, the app package that you need with all your forms, uh, that are required for this product. So just make sure you go there. And of course, if this is your first case, and you're just getting acclimated to Baltimore Life, uh, call IMES, they'll help you through that. 
and get all the forms you need together so that you're ready to go. I talked before about the, um, uh, the product toolkit. We have a number of great tools out on our agent website to help you in your marketing of this product. These are just a few mentioned on the screen. The biggest of which is uh, our mobile link software. So if you go to mobile.vaultlife.com, mobile.vaultlife.com, you'll be able to get to our mobile link app. And basically it's not an app that's downloadable from an app store, it's a website address. Once you get there on your phone or your smart tablet, simply save that um, point you're at uh, and create a shortcut to your, to your phone desktop. And uh, you'll be able to click on that and just use it over and over again. The great thing about mobile link, it not only provides the information on the product to remind you about how it works, but it will also give you the underwriting information you need that's supportive. And it will provide you with a, um, uh, all the numbers. It's, it's, a, it's an interactive rate calculator. So that ledger I showed you earlier can actually be shown right on your phone, just like I showed that. And it shows up pretty good in a landscape version, even on a, on a cell phone. Um, so it looks pretty good. Uh, we do the same thing for single premium whole life that I'm going to talk about in a moment. Number of other great marketing tools out there for you. And of course, IMS again, has a great marketing shop to support you. So let's talk now about single premium whole life. Single premium whole life is the sister product. And this product has many of the same goals. You want to increase the estate, leave a legacy for the family, but there's some key differences. The first of which is the source of funds. Uh, single premium whole life now is taking funds from after tax cash vehicles, CDs, money markets, mutual funds, and where appropriate, 1035 life to life product exchanges. The issue ages 50 to 85. Simplified underwriting on this product, of course, but with this product, we go through eight tables of underwriting. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, we have uh, the accelerated death benefit included automatically. But with this product, it's a little bit more lucrative in terms of how you can get money out of it. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So 50 to 85, the uh, premiums and the values are based on current age or age at last birthday. Two underwriting classes. We have standard, which is standard through table four types of risks through our simplified underwriting process, and special, which is tables five through table eight. We have two premium classes, non-tobacco and tobacco. And again, the minimum premium to get this started is only $5,000. How many clients do you think you have out there that have multiple CDs, money market accounts, after-tax funds that they compartmentalize or earmark? You know, I've got this money over here for my grandkids and for my kids and for my church, and they're earmarked funds. Seniors tend to silo their money. And um, this might be another situation that comes up. You go to them and you want to talk about buying some life insurance help with their final expenses. And they say, you know, Curtis, I really don't need any life insurance. I have a burial account set up. Well, that means one of two things. They either have a prearrangement at their local funeral home, or they might have, let's say, a $15,000 set up in their local bank in a CD that their kids know that's the money set aside to bury mom, you know, to bury mom. And here's how that role play might work. Mrs. Jones, you're 70. You're going to live many more years and costs are obviously going to go up. What if I was able to show you a way to take that $15,000 and provide your family with an income tax-free death benefit of over $25,000? Oh, by the way, if you became terminal in a nursing home or in an extended care situation, you could actually get at some of that cash as a living benefit, and we could still set it up and arrange it that's still some life insurance benefit left there for your family. Is that something you would be interested in? That's called the burial account concept, and I can't tell you how many agents get started selling this product that way until they figure out that fact-finding, again, is the name of the game to be rich uh, and, and to really do well in this marketplace. Finding the money and finding out what the, the intent of the money actually is. Maximum face value for single premium whole life is based on the maximum net amount at risk. And net amount at risk is simply the difference between the face amount that we issue and the single premium paid. And these are those limits based on age and underwriting class. And again, our software, uh, whether it be mobile link or the uh, full software package you see on our website, will not allow you to violate those limits. Cash, surrender, uh, cash values, they accumulate again on a non-participating basis in the life product. 
But here's another key advantage with this product, partial surrenders. You can actually take partial surrenders from this product in the first six years um, within limits. And you know, by, by the seventh year and beyond, you can take full surrenders from this product. Um, so if the client really, really is in desperate need of some cash and they don't want to surrender the contract, they can get money from it uh, as well. So that's, that's a true advantage. Loans, of course, they're available at any time. Three health event triggers on the accelerated death benefit rider, same ones you saw before terminal illness, qualified nursing and extended care. This benefit again is paid out once, paid out in a lump sum, and these are unrestricted funds. But the, the difference with this rider, which was filed years before the generation legacy riders, is that we set it up at that time where the state insurance departments allowed it, that um, you could take a full uh, acceleration, or you could do a partial acceleration. So in the situation I gave you before about the burial count, if the client had 100,000 in face, and they said, you know, let me take uh, 75,000 of that uh, in, a, in a cash payment, and then leave the remaining death benefit as a death benefit, as a life plan, death benefit. You could actually do that. Uh, that's called a partial acceleration. Or you can do a full, full acceleration within limits. And I'll show you those examples coming up. So the rider for terminal illness, it's the same definition to qualify, 12 months or less to live. But now if they want to do a full acceleration or even a partial acceleration, the maximum they can accelerate at is 95% of the face amount, less the 250 admin charge. So people say, well, what happened to the 5% that you didn't pay out? Well, anytime that any insurance company is going to accelerate a benefit you know, there's there's a cost for accelerating life insurance benefits in advance. You either do it through the lien method that we showed in Generation Legacy, or you do it by a whole back of a percentage, and that's what we're showing here. For qualified nursing, because they're going to live a little bit longer, the maximum accelerated rate is 90%. Again, same definition of qualify that I gave you before for qualified nursing. And for extended care, home health care, and adult daycare, same definition of qualify, but because they're going to live longer yet, the maximum accelerated rate is 80%. Don't forget that in each of these situations, you have the partial acceleration that could be done. Where you have the 100,000 in face, you take a partial acceleration at 80% and maybe leave 25,000 of life insurance there as a paid up death benefit. Same thing on chronic illness for um, nursing home care and extended care. Uh, two out of six activities of daily living, or a client suffering from a severe organic mental illness. So here's some premiums to death benefits. And what I want you to notice here, this is a 65-year-old for 50 grand going in, is that the death benefit that you'll see on single premium whole life is slightly higher than generation legacy, because this contract, of course, doesn't have the annuity payout that we have offered in Generation Legacy. So this will offer a, a slightly higher death benefit as well. So for the male in the standard underwriting class, you're getting a death benefit of just over 80 grand. For the female, the death benefit is almost 91,000. The beauty though for this product is you have that special underwriting class for tables five through eight, a client with a few more health conditions would qualify. So a, a rule of thumb is no matter what the age or the underwriting, I'm sorry, no matter what the age or the, um, uh, the amount that you're working with, the uh, death benefit for the special underwriting class will be about five to $6,000 difference, all right? Not a big difference in order to have that underwriting class available. So for that female 65, what did you do for her? She had leave behind money sitting in the, uh, in the bank making very low interest. She's getting a 1099 on it each year. And all she's trying to do is pass the money to the grandkids you've increased their estate by almost $41,000 at issue. And if she were in a 24% tax bracket, uh, you know, it would take her almost 27 years to accumulate that extra 41,000 you're giving her in her bump or increase in estate value. The life insurance benefit payout, almost 91 grand, of course, is income tax free. Oh, let me go back. So this is the 70 year old, a little older shorter life expectancy, but the numbers still look good, don't they? Uh, for that same 50 grand at 70, the male gets a death benefit of just over 72,000, the female a death benefit of 80,500 plus. And again, the special underwriting class gives them 
about five to six thousand dollars less in face amount, but it's still there and available for them. Forms, same thing. Go to our agent website, get all your forms that you need and applications, call Limes. They're happy to help you get started. We have the a number of other marketing materials, including this is all done on mobile link. So you can show all this on mobile link. I can't tell you how many appointments that I've helped agents on or been on myself because I'm a licensed agent where, um, you know, just use mobile link. <laughs> I had a client say, well, I'm putting money in a CD for my grandkids. Why are you doing that? Oh, I want to pass it along to them. What are you paying? What's your tax bracket? Uh, you know, you're getting 1099 on that each year. Let me show you. And we have a tool in our toolkit that shows them that if they put money in a CD, uh, you know, what they're making in interest. And then if they put money in single premium whole life, what they're getting in death benefit. And the comparison is pretty in your face, you know, interesting to the client. They say, oh my God, this is a big difference. And mobile link, as well as our other tools can help you show that. So you've worked very, very hard to find prospects, especially in this day and age, right? And to get out and see them. And uh, we know that, you know, if you can get them to the point of saying, yes, let's go, I really am interested, the biggest next step is, is underwriting. And many of you who are, let's say, annuity producers that might not do a lot of life insurance benefits, the last thing you want to deal with is underwriting. So we have a, a point of uh, uh, sale underwriting decision process that once you complete the application, you'll pick up the phone with your client, call our call center, and we'll do an interview that's about 12 minutes or less to complete all the underwriting right then and there. And well over 90% of the time, we're gonna give you an immediate underwriting decision, which works really, really great. All we're doing is you're completing the paper app that you're gonna send in to us. And um, uh, when you call the call center, we'll get the client's permission to draw all the data we need to look at from the MIB and the prescription drug database history. If there's anything fuzzy in that history, as compared to how they answered the app questions that we'll re-ask, the medical questions, uh, we'll, we'll you know, do a deeper dive. We'll figure out what the differences are, what the fuzziness is, and get the true decisions for that case so we can make a final decision there on the phone. So that really works well for the clients. The other nice thing is that, of course, we have call center hours I'll talk about in a second. And there are times when the call center may not be open when you're ready to make that call. Well, you know, you don't have to be present for the call. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But if you're not, any underwriting decision that we make with the client on the phone is not going to be given to the client. We're going to call you. We're going to make an outbound call to you, the agent, to make that call to the client, give them the underwriting decision. Uh, at the end of the call, we'll give you a confirmation number that we ask you to write on the application. Now, once the appointment's finished, of course, get back to your office, send us all the forms, regardless of the underwriting decision. So the phone number for the call center is toll free 888-368-9678. The hours are 9 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, as well as 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Fridays, and these are Eastern times. We do support English and Spanish languages. Other languages are available upon request. And of course, if you have a hearing impaired client, we have TTY services available in both English and Spanish. Keep in mind, this interview must be completed within five business days in order for us to complete and process your app. Now, what if you call during a normal set of hours? Well, if you call during normal hours with your client, we get the interview done, you walk away, you have a decision. But what if you call when the call center isn't open? Uh, you know, you're not gonna call right, because the call center is not available to you. Well, we actually want you to call because if you call on a weekend and you write that case on a weekend, go ahead and call the call center. And when you're prompted on the voice queue, leave your name and number, your client's name and number, and a date and time we want them called, all right? Let us know the date and time the client wants to be called. We'll call them at that date and time and then call you back again with the underwriting decision, and then you can call your client with it. Quick thing on pre-qualifying your applications. Uh, we have an app for each product, and the reason we do is that for Generation Legacy, there's one uh, level of underwriting, that's standard, standard through table four types of risk. So that app has one set of medical questions, a part A, think of them as knockouts. If you get a yes, you're not gonna qualify for Gen Leg. But if you get all no, height and weight MIB history look good, we're gonna issue the case. 
for single premium whole life because we have two uh, levels of underwriting, standard through table four, table five through table eight. We have two sets of medical questions, a part A and B. Still think of part A as knockouts, but if you get all no to part A and B, good height and weight history, uh, we're going to issue standard. If you get all no in part A, but one yes in part B, we're still going to issue on that um, special underwriting class for tables five through table eight. But again, any yes in part A would be a knockout and uh, neither tier would be available. So that gives you a quick idea in terms of the product itself. In the remaining minutes, Curtis, I'll just go very quickly uh, to make you aware of um, something we have here. Hold on. Slide is um, actually in, in the coming weeks, we're getting ready to change um, to a new design on our agent website. So they'll it'll look slightly different than this. But in our agent website, you're going to find product toolkits. These are those colored boxes at the top. And it really provides you with all the things that you need uh, to help market this product. Um, the One of the things I talked about was mobile link. And again, that's that site address. And even if you're not contracted yet, of course, call Limes and get contracted, but you can go to mobile.baltlife.com in order to get there. And this is what mobile link looks like. We also have point of sale presentations that allows you to do a nice conceptual presentation to your client on how GenLeg works, how it benefits them, uh, features and benefits. Uh, we go through the conceptual look of the, of the gift box concept, number of different things. So that's all available uh, out there on the site. We have those types of presentations. Uh, we have those, by the way, for both single premium whole life as well as generation legacy. We also have uh, fact finder tools that helps you ask those key dialoguing questions you should be asking your client. It allows you to gather their current assets and determine um, if they you know, are having the right amount of income ongoing and they transfer a certain portion of their funds, the impact that will make on their estate value. So good fact finding tools are out there and available for you. We also have a tool called Single Premium Sales Ideas. And this sales idea document has each of these ideas played out and written out and described in full. So take a look at Single Premium Sales Ideas it's a great way to start generating a prospect list. Uh, the leave behind money concept, annuities not needed for income, all these features, including the burial account concept that we talked about, 1035 ideas and the like. We have a number of other conceptual documents for you where you might wanna put it in a mailer, a leave behind piece, or maybe you're working a live event. Boy, that'll be nice to get back to someday of going out and doing community events. But they're great conceptual leaf behind pieces that give the concept of asset transfer features and benefits of whatever appropriate product you're working with. And then you can personalize the document with your contact information. I talked before about single premium whole life comparing a CD to the single premium product. This is that Excel file that will show you a look-see of how that comparison is right here. And it really is eye-opening uh, for seniors that just have that simple idea that I'll set up a CD for the grandkids or the kids to leave money behind. We have great white papers and other tools for you. And again, all that can be found out on our agent website. Of course, for more information, you can go to boltlife.com. And most importantly, go out there to IMES because they, they do a fantastic job of helping agents. Believe me, if I was an active agent still working today on the street, uh, I, I'd be contracting with IMES. They do a fantastic job. Uh, representing you and providing you with all the tools you need uh, to be successful. So, Curtis, I'm going to hand it back to you. Thank you, Gary, and I appreciate you being on the call, and I, I appreciate everybody taking the time uh, this morning uh, to be on here. I, and I hope you see the same thing that we do over here at IMS, which is Baltimore Life. Not only do they have a, a very competitive product suite, but one, they're one of the best out there as far as help and support sales from marketing to new business processing, et cetera. So um, a couple of things. One, I encourage you to reach out, talk to your life sales director over here. Phone number is 800-255-5055. Uh, chat with them about the product. They can help you get contracted, work with you on educating you on these. Secondly, as I mentioned, uh, November is Long-Term Care Awareness Month, so we did 
put together an LTC Awareness Month marketing package that has a variety of different ways that you can advertise and market uh, the living benefits of life insurance. Secondly, uh, we did send an email out last week. Uh, we just rolled out our 2021 marketing calendars. And so uh, if you haven't uh, responded to that or haven't received it, reach out to your sales director over here. It's got marketing and sales ideas for every month of the year next year and has just a lot of really good tools, tricks, tips, et cetera, in there. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being on the call today. Hope you have a good rest of the week, and we look forward to chatting with you. Thanks.